Okay, let's get some integrals where we have sines and cosines in them, and at least one of our trig functions is raised to an odd power. Because there's a technique that you can use for solving these that sets you up for a UDU substitution. And let's take a look at this one here to see how this technique works. We have the sine cubed of x times the cosine squared of x. If we think of this as the sine of x times sine squared of x, then we can rewrite the integral like this. We have the sine of x times 1 minus the cosine squared of x multiplied by cosine squared of x dx. And if you look at this, you see that this could be advantageous for us. If we call this u, that u for the cosine of x, that would be u squared, would be 1 minus u squared. And if u equals the cosine of x, du would be minus the sine of x dx. So by rewriting the integral like this, looking in these terms here, it sets us up for a UDU substitution. So we'd say let U equal the cosine of X. And in the derivative of that is minus the sine of X dx. So multiply both sides by minus 1. We have this. So the integral now becomes 1 minus u squared times u squared and the sine of x dx is just minus du. And here we are, we're all set to go. So this would be minus the integral of u squared u, and then minus u to the fourth with the minus sign, and we can do that right away, real fast, this should be equal to minus one-third u cubed, but u is this, so we have a cosine cubed of x, and then one-fifth u to the fifth, but u is this, that would be plus one-fifth cosine of x to the fifth power. And that's a solution to that integral there. So again, um, for the one that's raised to the odd power, think of writing it like this and breaking it up like that, sets us up for a UDU substitution. Now, let's look at the next one, though. We don't have a sine and a cosine multiplied together. We have the cosine cubed of x. But again, we can think of this as cosine squared of x times the cosine of x. And that would be the integral of 1 minus sine squared of x times the cosine of x dx. And now if we call this u, let u equal to the sine of x du is cosine of x dx. So we can rewrite it it's just the integral of 1 minus u squared du. Okay, um, and again, that's so trivial we don't even bother taking it out any further from there. We want to make this comment. Suppose it was, suppose we had the integral of cosine to the fifth of x dx. So we could say, well, that would be cosine to the 
before of x multiplied by the cosine of x dx, and that would be 1 minus the sine squared of x quantity squared, that would be cosine to the fourth. So we can rewrite this circuit thing like this. Same principle now. Like this. 1 minus sine squared of x squared times the cosine of x. Dx. That's the same thing as before. We say let u equal the sine of x. Du will equal the cosine of x times dx. So now the problem becomes the integral of 1 minus u squared quantity squared times du. And let's see if we can just finish this off real quick. So now we're integrating this integral. This integral now is rewritten like this. So this one was so trivial we set it up and then just abandoned it. Consider the more complicated one this. And this would be 1 minus q times u squared plus u to the fourth du. There it is. Uh, this would be equal to u. And it's like we have minus two thirds u q plus one fifth u to the fifth. And remember u was the sine of x. That didn't change. So for this one here, it comes up being equal to the sine of x. And then minus two thirds sine cubed of x. And plus one fifth sine to the fifth of x plus an arbitrary constant, and that's it. Um, there's no more to it than that. So again, when you see this works especially well, to say when you we have sine or cosine raised to an odd power. Now let's consider though what happens if we have that same setup. One of them is raised to an odd power, but we have a rational function. So let's say we handle that kind of a situation. So we have the integral sine cubed of x divided by cosine squared of x dx. And again, though, it's the same kind of thinking. What if we wrote this as sine of x times sine squared of x. So then that would be equal to the integral of the sine of x. That's 1 minus the cosine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x dx. So let's see, how do we handle that? Um, again, if we call this u equals the cosine of x, u would be minus the sine of x dx. So we have 1 minus u squared divided by u squared. Looks like that. That ought to work out for us. Let's try it. Let u equal the cosine of x minus du will equal the sine of x dx. Get the derivative, we get minus sine, which we put over there. Okay, so it looks like this would be equal to the integral. This is u minus du for that, and that's 1 minus u squared. So we have 1 minus u squared minus du divided by u squared. And 1 over u squared minus u squared over u squared looks like this will be equal to 
minus the integral of 1 over u squared, that's u to the minus 2, this would be plus u squared over u squared is just 1. And this minus 2 plus 1 is u to the minus 1, with a minus sign out here, divided by minus 1. And here we have plus u. So this, these two negate each other. So we have 1 over u. u is the cosine of x. That is the secant of x. Plus u. That's the cosine of x. And that's it. So whether they're multiplied together or whether you have, whether the two sine and cosine functions are multiplied together or whether you have a rational function that divided together, if you see an odd power, try writing it out with this strategy here a lot of times. That will set you up for a convenient UDU substitution. Um, okay, and there are some other tricks that we can use when we have trig functions raised to different powers, and we'll try and tackle those in some more videos. So come back and join us for those, or we'll solve a different set of problems.